Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to be taking a look at the old champ, the GTX 1080 Ti. We're going to be comparing it to the, I guess you can say mainstream GPUs, mainstream in air quotes, in terms of the pricing that they should be, and we're going to see how they all compare. When I got the 1080 Ti, it was actually a pretty decent deal. I got it for about $400. They're going for about $350 right now. The RX 6600 we'll be comparing it to regularly goes for about $300 to $350. And we're going to compare it to the RTX 3060, which is supposed to be about $300, $350, but is regularly selling for about $450. So that is substantially more, but I wanted to see how these three compared and if they're all relatively the same, which one makes the most sense for you if you're looking for a great 1080p gaming option here today. So that's what we're gonna be talking about, but first. Do you hate spending full price for Microsoft product keys? Well, today's video sponsor, keysoff.com, has the solution for you. Keysoff.com is offering Microsoft keys at a heavy discount and for you guys, the good old gamer community, they're offering an extra promotion for additional savings. So whether you're in the market for Windows 10, Microsoft Office, or even Windows 11, which I personally don't recommend, I recommend Windows 10. You can go ahead, click on it, go ahead, add to cart, and make sure you enter in the promo code VKB50 and then hit apply coupon code and receive an additional 50% off your order. For payment options, you can pay either by C-Wallet Co. or via credit card for simple and easy checkout. Since it's finally a great time to build that dream gaming PC you've wanted for so long, you might as well go ahead and take advantage of this additional 50% promo code to get your Windows activated, up to date, and get gaming as soon as possible. So make sure you click the links down below and use the promo code VKB50 to get that additional discount. Now back to our video. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna go over the test system used. If you guys watch the Good Old Gamer Live channel, which links are down below if you have not subscribed to that, I did most of this testing live with you guys. We did have some issues with the motherboard and that delayed this video a little bit. I'll talk about that here in a sec. But for the CPU, I decided to go with the Core i3-12100. Why did I use this? Because right now, this is actually the fastest gaming CPU I have on hands. Go figure. But I figured let's go ahead and do that. I did tune it so the memory is tuned in there and it is running quite fast. So there was no real issue with a CPU bottleneck with this level of GPU. All right, so I went ahead and paired this originally with a Gigabyte B660 DS3H. That did not work. I got through a complete round of benchmark tests off camera and then during the first live stream over on the good old gamer live it just wouldn't work with the exact same settings i did nothing to the thing so what i ended up having to do was go out basically borrow a z690 board from my local best buy i got the msi z690 pro a and that worked just fine so i just dialed back in all the settings i had working before that decided not to work and everything ran very smooth on that motherboard. Now, granted, that's overkill for this chip, but you can go with something like the MSI B660 Pro-A, and I'm assuming you'll get a very similar experience. I went ahead and paired this with 16 gigabytes of Patriot Viper Steel Samsung B-Die DDR4 4000. So this is basically the best and cheapest RAM you can get for DDR4. So if you're out there and you wanna get some extra performance, I would start here as they are going for dirt cheap prices. I got mine for about $87. I just picked up another kit on Amazon for 72. So they're getting very, very, very reasonably priced. For game storage, I use the Kingston KC 2500 2 terabyte PCIe Gen 3 NVMe. And I also used a one terabyte 2500 as the uh, Windows drive that was actually in the system. And then for the GPUs, I'm using the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti SC model, which isn't the super mega overclocked model, but it's definitely very, very powerful. And like I said, this is gonna be one of the cheaper ones. So if you wanted to pick one up, they're gonna be around the 350 mark here today. I went ahead and got lucky. I got my hands on a Radeon RX 6600 from PowerColor. It's the fighter edition for $280 used over on eBay making this the least expensive GPU that we have here in the stack. And then I was also lucky enough to have a member go ahead and hook me up with an EVGA 
RTX 3060 XC for about $300. Now, in reality, these are still going for $400 to $450, making this card the most expensive card out of the three. Now, if you're interested in any of these parts or any more of the specs, you can go ahead and click the description down below. All of that's in there, so you guys can go ahead and check that out for yourself. So, alrighty guys, enough of that. Let's go ahead and check out these benchmarks. All right, so what the hey, we'll just do them in alphabetical order, make life easy. So, kicking things off, we're gonna take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. All tests were done at 1080p high, no DLSS, no FSR, and 100% scaling. So, if you wanna try these out at home, you can do those yourself. So kicking things off, we had the RX 6600 coming in with an average of 88 FPS and a 1% low of 63. The RTX 3060 coming in at 82 and 62. So 1% low, virtually the same, a little bit behind on the average, but that's not that big of a deal. With the GTX 1080 Ti coming in at 90 FPS on the average and then 59 on the 1% low. So the fastest average and the lowest low. So overall, most of these are very, very competitive, as you can see, kicking things off. Next up, taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077, we have the RX 6600 coming in with an average frame rate of 67 FPS and 54 FPS on the 1% low. The RTX 3060 coming in at 72 FPS on average and 59 on the 1% low. So we are seeing a little bit of a gap here in advantage for the RTX 3060. And then we have the GTX 1080 Ti coming in at 66 FPS on average and 52 on the 1% low. So once again, a little bit lower on that 1% low, but virtually tied with the 6600. In this particular title, the RTX 3060 does have a slight advantage. Now moving on over to Far Cry 5 here, we can see the RX 6600 coming in at 139 FPS on average and 120 FPS on the 1% low. And then with the RTX 3060 coming in at 144 FPS on average and 116 on the 1% low. So a little bit further behind on the 1%, a little bit further ahead on the average. Moving on over to the GTX 1080 Ti, we have a 155 FPS on average, taking a commanding lead, and 120 FPS on the 1% low. So in this particular title, the 1080 Ti has the advantage on both 1% low and average FPS, probably due to the fact that this is a DirectX 11 title, which the GTX 10 series really dominated in. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn. We have the 6600 coming in at 101 FPS on average and 63 FPS on the 1% low. Then the RTX 3060 with a 114 FPS average, so that's actually a pretty sizable gap there, and 69 on the 1% low. So not too much of an advantage on the 1% low, but the average FPS does have a sizable lead there. And then we have the GTX 1080 Ti at 112 FPS on average and 69 on the 1% low, virtually tying the RTX 3060. Now, StarCraft II I typically use for CPU benchmarking, but I figured let's just see if there is a difference. And well, we actually do have one, which I found very interesting. We have the RX 6600 coming in at 272 FPS on average and 201 on the 1% low. Paired with the RTX 3060, however, we got 308 FPS on average with 214 on the 1% low. So this isn't as big of a jump as it looks. This is only about 5%, but that's noticeable considering this is mostly a CPU constrained game. Going over to the GTX 1080 Ti, we can see 267 FPS on average and 196 on the 1% low, meaning the two newer GPUs actually perform faster, although this is virtually tied with the 6600. The outlier here is the RTX 3060, which, well, it's definitely an interesting uh, case here. There might be something in the driver to optimize for this game. Moving on over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have the RX 6600 coming in at 103 FPS on average and 82 on the 1% low. The RTX 3060 coming in at 113 on average and 90 on the 1% low. So the RTX 3060 takes basically a 10% lead on 1% and average FPS. And then the GTX 1080 Ti coming in at 115 FPS on average and 86 on the 1% low, winning on the average, but losing a little bit on the 1% low. I would argue that these are virtually tied with the 6600 just tailing by a little bit. Next up, we have Watch Dogs Legion. We have the RX 6600 with an average FPS of 102 and 80 on the 1% low. 
the RTX 3060 coming in at 100 FPS and 81 on the 1% low. So in this case, we have a virtual tie between the two GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD. We are using the AMD preview driver that just released, which they did state some significant uplifts in Watch Dogs Legion. And then we have the GTX 1080 Ti coming in at 99 FPS on average and 77 FPS on the 1% low, trailing just a little bit on both average and 1% low, but we're talking almost margin of error here. And then lastly, we're gonna finish up with another DirectX 11 title, The Witcher 3. We have the RX 6600 coming in at 131 FPS on average and 110 on the 1% low. We have the RTX 3060 coming in at 127 FPS on average, 103 on a 1% low. So this is another title where AMD does take the lead over the RTX 3060. However, the GTX 1080 Ti says, no thank you boys, and comes in at 149 FPS on average and 112 on the 1% low, meaning it's the fastest on both 1% low and the average FPS. Being that this is DirectX 11, it really shows the prowess of Pascal here. And then finally, if we look at all games averaged out, we have the RX 6600 coming in at 125 FPS on average, with 97 as the 1% low. We have the RTX 3060 at 133 FPS on average, 99 on the 1% low, and the 1080 Ti virtually the same at 132 and 96 on the 1% low. So looking at this, we can see that the 6600 is a little bit slower, that is measurable, and if we look at the 1% lows, these are virtually all margin of error, and realistically, this is the most important number here, meaning that all of these are gonna give you a very similar experience overall. So I found that very interesting comparing these three graphics cards. We basically have a $300 card, we have an old $350 card, which used to be the king of the kings, and still probably my most favorite GPU flagship of all time. It's probably gonna go in, down in history as the best flagship of all time. And then we have a $400 to $450 modern day NVIDIA card, and they're all basically the same level of performance. Some games prefer one game uh, architecture or GPU over the other, but overall, when you wash it out, they're virtually the same. So in this case, what would I recommend you guys get? Honestly, it would be the RX 6600. It makes the most sense. It's the least expensive. You're gonna get virtually the same gaming experience with this card over the other two. Now, the 1080 Ti is actually a close second because for that extra $50, you do get some of the NVIDIA niceties. You do get you know, their CUDA feature set. You don't get the DLSS or the ray tracing stuff, but you also get three more gigabytes of VRAM. So this has more VRAM than the 6600, one less than the 3060. So it's it does have its use cases. So if you don't care about ray tracing or any of the new features, but you do some productivity workload and you want a card that's gonna be able to run those ultra high textures here moving forward, you might wanna think about the old 1080 Ti. It is a solid option. Now, the one that I can't recommend out of the three is obviously the RTX 3060. It might be a little bit faster here or there, but overall, the price point is simply too high. The other two options just make more sense. The 3060, I think if it was 400 flat, you could make the argument it has the most VRAM, it has the most features, it might be worth it. And then at 350, it completely eliminates the 1080 Ti uh, at virtually every level. And I think that it would definitely be the go-to at 350 USD. So 350 to 400 actually would probably make sense for that relative to the RX 6600. But what really shocked me was is that the 6600 with this new preview driver is able to keep up with a GTX 1080 Ti. I would have thought that this would have been great marketing for AMD to put out there, hey, look at this, $300 1080 Ti. Now granted, that's not that big of a deal from a few years ago, but post mining boom and everything else, that would be a great marketing strategy for them to put out. I just haven't seen them really market it that way. But now you guys know that that's relatively the performance level that you'll be getting. You can make a more informed decision if you're looking to get yourself a mainstream GPU. 
as they're likely not going to get refreshed for a little while. The new high-end stuff will be out later this year and probably mid next year we will see replacements for these. So these are going to remain very viable for a good long time. And honestly, it's not like these cards are going to stop gaming once the new model comes out here in the future. And typically GPUs in these price ranges don't lose value as much. You might lose a hundred bucks versus like five or six or 800 at the high end. So if you were afraid of losing a lot of value, I wouldn't worry about it in this particular price category. Well, alrighty guys, I hope you found this interesting. I wanna hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you're interested in any of these graphics cards or if you're just gonna keep on waiting till next gen, let me know. I wanna hear all your thoughts on this. And yeah, thank you all for your support watching live doing the benchmark tests. I'm still gonna be rejiggering on how we're gonna be doing that. So the next one will be on Monday and they are late in the evening. I do about 10, 10.30 central time here in the United States because I do it after my son goes to bed. But if you wanna join in, click the link down below in the description. Go ahead and subscribe over there, hit the notification bell. I may just end up doing it randomly here and there. So if I got some free time, I might just say, hey, we're gonna do some stuff today, but I do wanna have a couple scheduled ones each week so you guys definitely know. Next one that I'm going to have scheduled is Monday. So look forward to seeing you guys there, chatting with you guys live, testing some stuff out, having a good time with it. And that's all I have for you guys here today. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.